Hello and welcome to OEN Engage. Thank you for joining us for today's session, Introduction to Publishing Support. My name is Karen Lauritsen. I am Senior Director of Publishing at the Open Education Network. I'm truly delighted to be able to spend this time with you today and to thank you for your work to make education more accessible through open education. Before we begin, I would like to note that the OEN is housed at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities, which is built within the traditional homelands of the Dakota people. It's important to acknowledge the people on whose land we live, learn, and work as we seek to improve and strengthen our relations with our tribal nations. We also acknowledge that words are not enough. We must ensure that our institution provides support, resources, and programs that increase access to all aspects of higher education for our American Indian students, staff, faculty, and community members. A few reminders, the session is being recorded. The transcripts, videos, slides, all the good stuff will be sent to you. All of the registrants and the OEN Google group later this month. We will also post videos to the community hub. Jamie Whitman, our Open Educational Practices Specialist, is monitoring the chat. Please feel free to ask your questions as you think of them. I know that there are many of you here who may be able to respond, so I encourage you to do that. And I've also saved time at the end of the hour for questions as well. We're committed to providing a friendly, safe, and welcoming environment for all of you. Please see our community norms at z.umn dot edu slash oen community norms and join us in creating a safe and constructive space if you're on twitter you can find us at open ed underscore network the hashtags for oen engage are oen engage 23 and more connection so with that i'm going to start sharing my slides All right, so as I mentioned, uh, welcome. This is Introduction to Publishing Support, and I'm Karen, but also I'm really just one voice of many in the community, and I'd especially like to call out these members of our advisory groups. We have a publishing advisory group and a Pub 101 committee. All of these people are working on your behalf to develop support so that you are less alone as you try to navigate what can be kind of tricky in terms of open educational uh, resource publishing. I would especially like to thank Angelique Carson, who is able to join us today and um, is another friendly face in this publishing community. Now we are truly the shared abundance. Uh, Dave and others on the team have talked about our guiding principles yesterday and today. And so I just mean to highlight that all of you, uh, no matter your experience in the publishing realm are truly part of the shared abundance that we have together at the Open Education Network. That means that there is always someone you can turn to who can offer support, guidance, lesson learned and expertise but it can help to kind of have a sense of one another rather than just uh, sending your possibly panicked question out into the ether of a Google group with many people on it. And so I encourage you to take a moment and share in the chat just a little tidbit about yourself, something that you're looking forward to this summer or maybe something you already did this summer. For example, this summer I will travel to Kansas. Uh, or when I'm not working, I like to fill in the blank, or something I want you to know about me is. So if you could please share a response to one of these prompts in the chat, that will start to highlight the connections that we share amongst our group. Meanwhile, I will carry on. To preview what we're going to talk about in this hour, publishing support is here for you in terms of community, professional development, and infrastructure. Those are really the three buckets in which um, many different uh, support mechanisms are here for you. So I'm gonna talk about uh, Tea Time, Pub 101. I'm gonna talk about uh, pilot groups and other events. And I'm gonna highlight some infrastructure that 
your colleagues are testing for you or that you have already available to you as you either continue with the PEB publishing program or think about uh, designing one. So this is just meant to be kind of a, a mental map or a preview of what's coming up in this next hour. I'm gonna start by setting the publishing scene. Then I'm going to offer three common publishing scenarios and some of the support the OEN offers to those different scenarios. Then I'll talk more about your publishing community and the resources available to you and save time for questions and discussion. So briefly, setting the scene. Uh, many of you may have attended the workshop this morning on adoption. And generally that is a great place to start. If you are really at square one with your open education program, um, adoption can be a little bit more straight ahead and straightforward than publishing and creation. Um, and when we talk about publishing, it's really integral to open education. And that's whether it's being created through open pedagogy um, or one author working solo. It just means that there are more voices and perspectives in a learning environment and that we have very flexible text that can reflect the moment. So if there's something in the news and faculty or students wanna update their text to reflect that, they can add a new case study, they can add stories, interviews, multimedia, for example. There's a lot that open textbooks and open education have to offer. Now, publishing can mean many things. And in our community, we hear it uh, referred to with in many different verbs. So um, publishing is really a big umbrella. It means creating an open textbook, authoring, writing, making it, adapting, editing, modifying, it might mean simply posting some files so that other people can access them around the world or archiving those files, providing a stable place for them. When we talk about publishing in the OEN, we're talking about all of it and we appreciate any of it that you might be in a position to do. You're all in very different contexts and um, we really appreciate the challenges that you face in those contexts and we're looking for different ways that we can offer flexible support no matter where you are. The other thing I'll mention about publishing is that even for that one person book, publishing does involve people. And um, you can be working solo or in teams. With people usually comes feelings uh, and emotion, and they really can come to the surface in uh, creating an open textbook. And so that's just another thing that I really like to recognize as we talk about publishing. These can sometimes feel like very high stakes projects. Um, and so, learning to support one another and take care of ourselves as we work on these projects is really important. As I'm sure many people uh, knowing the experience uh, reflected in, in the room right now can, can testify. So in the Open Education Network, uh, we are supporting you at your institution as the publisher. We are not publishing the books that you find in the Open Textbook Library. Um, we're really looking for ways to um, distribute and share that load or that lift. We do focus specifically on open textbooks. That's because of the open textbook library. Um, but you can extend much of what you learn and much of what is available in our publishing support to other types of OER. Open textbooks are, of course, free to the end user. They have permissions typically granted by the Creative Commons license to edit them. Textbooks also have structure. We have all uh, opened up a textbook and seen, for example, a box. Um, and that box is um, actually integral to what a textbook is. There are consistent pedagogical elements that clue the students into what they need to know. The information when, when well-organized is organized hierarchically. Uh, it's different from a monograph in that it has these different pedagogical elements, for example, um, every chapter might open with key terms and conclude with a summary. It's that kind of consistency that also provides an open textbook structure. And it's that structure that is really integral to accessibility. So all of that is, is baked into what we talk about when we talk about publishing at the OEN. So that was the brief scene setting uh, that I wanted to share with you today. Now I'm going to jump into some of those publishing scenarios um, that I mentioned earlier. You may be able to identify yourself in one of these scenarios. You may feel like, 
um, they're not quite where you're at. Um, and so if you have a unique scenario that you want to bounce off the community, I encourage you to do that. So scenario number one, you're at an institution and you've started to hear from faculty, maybe in that adoption workshop, that they're interested in writing an open textbook. But no one that you work with, no one in your library or in your Center for Teaching and Learning have much of a publishing background. But you do have an institutional repository. You don't have a lot of money. It's pretty hard to find right now. But maybe, maybe things will change later. And so you really have this sense of wanting to help these faculty who are interested, but you're not sure how. Where do you start? So in this scenario, you could consider signing up for Pub 101. It's an orientation to publishing. It helps you anticipate a lot of the common scenarios that come up as you start to support faculty in publishing. It's a very friendly experience. And um, I'll talk a little bit more about Pub 101 details in a minute. You could decide to try a project. Maybe one of the faculty who expresses interest you have a relationship with that person, you feel comfortable with them, you feel like if you go together into the great unknown that it could be okay. You could do a soft launch with that person. You could um, say to authors, great, I'm glad you're interested. We don't have a lot of support right now, but you know, write in whatever tool you prefer. And then once you have your completed file, we can share that in our institutional repository so you can make it available to others. And if it meets the OTL criteria, you know, share it um, more broadly through the OTL. So I mentioned Pub 101. Pub 101 is two things. One, it's a curriculum. It's in Canvas, it's openly available, and it is chock full of templates, recommendations, stories from the field, things that you can adapt and use. Two, it's also live sessions. Once a year, typically in the early spring, we all get together, we meet seven or eight times, and we talk about some of the things that are um, common in publishing open textbooks. And we really just try to offer an opportunity for you to get to know one another, hear from people who've been down the road, and ask some questions about ways that you can move forward. The intention of Pub 101 is to be friendly and informal. It's not a certificate. We're not following the curriculum uh, as it's laid out in Canvas. It's really more of a compliment. Uh, we want to lay the foundation for you so that regardless of what publishing tool you or your authors might use, you have the foundation of, for example, how to write an MOU or how to have a delicate conversation with a faculty author who's six months behind on you know, turning in their, their open textbook. We really want to provide a preview, a preview of what's involved in supporting an author, offer you an opportunity to consider your vision and capacity for publishing at your institution. And again, just highlight that there are resources available for you. You don't have to create things from scratch um, and that there are people here who can help you. And we try to do all of that while really emphasizing um, your well-being and taking care of yourself. This is a quick example of something you'll find in the Pub 101 curriculum. Uh, it's a little introduction to author agreements and contracts, why they're important, what you wanna consider if you're going to create an MOU. And then it also provides links to an adaptable publishing agreement um, and examples from different institutions within the OEN so that you can pick and choose or remix according to your needs. Now I have included at the bottom of this slide, you'll see a link to the Pub 101 Canvas curriculum. But as I said at the beginning, you'll have all of this available to you um, at the end of uh, OEN Engage. And so um, you don't have to worry about you know, going to all the links unless you're super excited, in which case it's at z.umn.edu slash OEN dash Pub 101. And there's that friendly reminder. Okay, second scenario. You found some money. You're gonna offer a grant program so that faculty can create open textbooks. You think that three is probably a good number and you're going to try and work first with high enrollment courses so that these textbooks can replace an expensive book in a course with a lot of students and you'll really get a lot of bang for buck. 
You are ready and prepared to help faculty authors with navigating Creative Commons licenses, what they mean and how they can select one that's right for them, or how they can become comfortable with using the license that you may decide is right for your program. And then that's pretty much the parameter of your support right now. Um, funding and Creative Commons license consultation, which can, can take time and can actually be quite broad in terms of helping people find images, for example, that are also openly licensed. But generally, you know, you ask the faculty to get back to you when they're finished. And if you're wondering how long that might be, I would say it's often a year, maybe two. Now for this scenario, you could adapt resources from the OEN publishing toolkit, especially that MOU I keep highlighting. Uh, you could consider offering faculty access to Pressbooks. Pressbooks uh, provides one year of complimentary access to OEN members and then a 30% discount. You could uh, determine if publications are a reflection of your mission and brand. And this is really starting to think about or starting to anticipate, okay, we're providing funding to faculty. We're helping them a bit with this process. If we're offering them Pressbooks, is this going to say, for example, our library um, on the cover of the book? Or are we um, really creating these books as a way to signal to the campus community our value as a partner in making higher education more affordable? Or do we want to kind of be in the background supporting faculty and have them, you know, kind of be face forward? <clears throat> Those are types of things you would maybe want to consider at this stage or in this scenario. Here's an example from the community that I wanted to highlight because uh, this is a consortium, Palni. They're offering a grant program within their consortium and they're looking for proposals that meet the inclusion criteria for the open textbook library. Um, and since uh, the OEN is in, in both of these spaces, both in terms of publishing and sharing, I just wanted to highlight this as something that I think is, is a really great way to ensure that what is being created can be shared more broadly. We're always thrilled to add books to the library and it's a great way to highlight the scholarship and um, work that is coming out of your institution. If you're wondering what exactly that criteria might be, you can always find it on the open textbook library under about open textbooks. There are four criteria listed there. If you have any questions about them, uh, please feel free to contact us. Now, I also mentioned for the second scenario that you may want to check out our publishing toolkit. This is a collection of adaptable templates and resources that have been organized chronologically by publishing phase. These have been gathered and adapted from the community. They have been used by your colleagues in the OEN. And this is just a kind of a one document list that you can turn to depending on your stage. Uh, of your publishing program to call upon, you know, what do I do during production? Is there, is there a checklist I can use um, in terms of making sure that everything has uh, been confirmed to be openly licensed, for example? The toolkit is at z.umn.edu slash pub toolkit. It's also linked from the community hub. Here's a screenshot of the um, Adaptable Open Educational Resources Publishing Agreement. You can see that um, it's even been highlighted to, to show you um, what needs to be changed at your institution. And in this particular case, we do recommend that you consult with your general counsel, um, just because there's some intellectual property issues often to navigate. Okay. You've been listening to me talk for a while now, so I'm going to pause and invite you to talk about publishing or other things, or not at all. If you need a break, um, this is a time to turn off your camera, um, turn off your mic, or keep them turned off, as the case may be, and pause. Um, but after the next 10 minutes or so, we are going to return. I will discuss publishing scenario three. I'm gonna highlight some monthly meetings, um, a couple that are coming up later in July and talk about some publishing groups and opportunities for you to get involved and get the support you need. 
So don't go away. Um, but if you do want to pause, um, that is totally understandable. If you are ready, however, to meet a few other people in this space, we do have some questions prepared for you. Uh, this is an icebreaker called Questions in a Hat. And really, it's just a way to get to know one another. If you prefer to talk freely, by all means. Um, but if you want to have a little fun, um, here are what I've grouped into work hat questions and fun hat questions. And uh, when we break into breakout rooms, introduce yourself, pick a question from work hat or fun hat, and you know, uh, introduce yourself a little bit that way and get to know one another. And we will, uh, let's see, put the link in the chat for uh, the icebreaker at z.umn.edu slash hats dash off. And then um, after our breakout rooms, we will regroup, as I said, and move on to scenario three. If you have any questions, please let us know in the chat. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Everyone's returned. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. I hope that was restful or invigorating or a few moments of whatever you needed. So turning our minds back to different publishing scenarios that we see uh, in higher education when it comes to making open textbooks, we have scenario number three. So faculty are interested in writing open textbooks and there is money to support them and the staff who support them. In this case, there are people who have publishing backgrounds and everyone wants to create an OER publishing program that really showcases faculty work and how it is benefiting students. And perhaps because of the publishing background of people on staff, there are many fans of copy editors. And so um, this is scenario number three. And in terms of support that someone might consider in this scenario would be using Scribe's editorial services. Scribe is a partner that we work with. They provide editorial services for um, not just textbook authors or um, university presses, but also publishing houses and they're really experts in the field. And so um, working with them can really help streamline and relieve some stress in the final production stages of um, publishing a textbook. You could decide that um, because you have staff with a publishing background that you're really going to provide a step-by-step -step process for faculty authors, perhaps a timeline, more of a hands-on project management approach in which you check in regularly and even perhaps train them on using shared tools so that you have a sense of where the project is at a given time. And because of the investment that you're making um, financially and in terms of uh, staff time and you know, the value that you see in these publishing endeavors, you've decided that you would like to create an imprint. Um, and we do talk about creating an imprint in Pub 101. It's something that Scribe has experience supporting some of their clients in. Um, and so that's an option to consider at, um, in this scenario. So a little bit more about editing design and production services. Uh, it really runs the gamut. It can include copy editing, proofreading, indexing, typesetting, design, ancillary development, which can be really crucial uh, for open textbook adoption. They, uh, there's also multilingual editing and a full suite of pre-press services for both print and electronic formats. So let's say um, a, a giant parachute of cash landed in your library and you wanted to spend it on open textbook publishing. You could um, have Scribe really be the, the hands-on support that you want your faculty to have and you could step back and focus on the many other things that you need to do in your role. Or you could, and this is much more common because those parachutes of cash um, have not been landing, uh, you could decide to go ad hoc. And uh, typically, if you have a limited budget and there's really only one thing you can do with an open textbook, 
Scribe and others would recommend that you select copy editing because investing in copy editing really strengthens the, uh, the work um, immeasurably. And so if there is time and funding to do something like that, um, copy editing is typically where um, you'll get the best return on investment. OEN members work directly with Scribe as a vendor. We're not involved. You decide what services you want. Um, and uh, the benefit of coming to them through the OEN is that typically Scribe charges a setup fee. And so um, because of your affiliation with the OEN, you would not have to pay that setup fee. They do also um, provide pretty good estimation services. So if you are able to give them the manuscript and say, here's what we have, uh, what does it need? How much is it gonna cost? Uh, they can provide that for you. This is one example of a book that um, was produced with a lot of involvement from Scribe. Uh, this is Inferring and Explaining. It was published at Portland State University. It's a philosophy textbook published in 2019. Scribe is the one that made the PDF, ebook, and online formats available. And as a quick glance at sort of what that difference looks like on the left, you can see the Word file that was created, which looks great. Um, there's nothing wrong with this file. We'd be happy to add this book to the Open Textbook Library as is. And then on the right, you can see a higher touch design. There's color incorporated. Um, you see a little bit more visual hierarchy in terms of your eye goes to statistics, first and foremost on the page because it is large, it's in uh, kind of that lovely um, coral color. And there are just these other visual cues, including a two column format that, um, you know, just, bring the reading experience uh, to another place. Okay, now we're gonna pause briefly for a quick poll. Um, we have three scenarios and I would like to know which of the three scenarios we've talked through you feel are closest to your local context. So there is that first scenario um, and I'm just gonna come out of my slides so I can see what's happening with the poll. There was the first scenario uh, where faculty are interested, you want to support them, but you're not sure how, so maybe you're going to try a test project. There's the second scenario. We're doing this. We have a grant program. We're providing a publishing platform or something like that. Scenario three, we have funding. We have publishing expertise. We want to have an imprint or none of the above. This is not where we're at. Um, we may get here. We may not. And that's totally okay, too. We've got an 85% polling return, which is pretty great. It looks like we're capping out at 88%. So I'm going to go ahead, uh, Lorraine, if you would please end the poll. We can share the results and this end the suspense. So I think you should be able to see the majority of you most relate to scenario number two. We're offering faculty a creation grant program. We're providing a publishing platform. And then scenario number one, which is, you know, faculty are interested in this. We want to find a way to support them and we're figuring it out. Great. Thank you so much for um, letting us know where you're at. Okay, back to my slides. Are we good, Jamie? Yeah, we do have a question in the chat if you want to take that now. Sure. Sure. Um, Morgan asked um, if they're interested in working with Scribe on an ad hoc basis, how would they contact them since they're members of the OEN? Yeah, Morgan, um, we have a document in the community hub about working with Scribe and how to contact them. And I can put that link in the chat or one of my colleagues might be able to drop that link in um, when we get to the Q&A, but we have that all written out. Um, and it's as simple as sending an email. Thank you for your question. Okay, no matter the scenario, one, two, or three, important things to keep in mind as you engage in open textbook publishing, you are of course a human being and not a machine. Um, publishing usually includes a few surprises, so be ready for the unexpected. 
it will probably take longer than you think. And as I mentioned at the beginning, feelings sometimes can run a little hot. Uh, but you're not alone. There's a community here. Um, someone has been down this road before and uh, whether you need a, a virtual shoulder to lean on or a document that you can distribute, um, we are here for you. Okay, so we covered common publishing scenarios and some different support that is available for them. Now I'm going to talk about your publishing community and uh, dig a little bit more deeply into those resources. First, I'd like to talk about Tea Time. Tea Time is organized by your publishing co-op advisory group. It's very informal, although we do have monthly topics. They're typically held on the first Monday of the month and we try to save time at the end for what we call tea and sympathy. If you are struggling and want a safe place uh, where you can talk about those struggles, tea time is here for you. They're not recorded. Um, we will send an email invitation on a monthly basis. So look for that or uh, look at the community hub calendar to see what's coming up. In August, on August 7th at 1 p.m. Central, the, the tea time topic is top 10 things you can do to set up your Pressbooks project for maximum design impact and accessibility. That will be led by Mark Lane, who's at Oregon State University and been involved in the publication of many open textbooks. And he's also a member of our publishing advisory group. Now at the very beginning, I mentioned that uh, I was gonna talk about support in three buckets, community, Prof uh, professional development and infrastructure. So a couple words about infrastructure. Uh, Pressbooks, as I mentioned, uh, offers a, uh, a discount to OEM members as well as a year of free access. And Pressbooks, if you're not already familiar, is a publishing platform that you can use to create, adapt, and share accessible interactive web first books. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about Manifold and Katita in a minute just to provide a little um, framework. Manifold is a free to install platform to publish and read networked media rich books on the web. We're currently piloting Manifold and you can see our Manifold pilot groups projects at manifold.open.umn.edu. We're getting ready to launch a Katita pilot. Katita is a web-based book production platform and open source project that includes the Open Textbook Planner, something uh, that we've been working with the Katita team to develop over the last few years to support authors as they plan and structure their open textbooks in the beginning stages. And then of course, uh, you're all probably familiar with the Open Textbook Library. That's an integral part of our infrastructure and in some ways, um, a culmination of publishing efforts. One thing I want to highlight about the Open Textbook Library is the coming soon feature that you can find on the home page. This coming soon is filled in by uh, the OEN community. In other words, uh, Oklahoma State University is working on a project, Scientific Writing for Publication, a Transdisciplinary Approach. It is Oklahoma State University who actually put the metadata into the community hub, which is now feeding the front page of the Open Textbook Library. So if you are working on publishing projects at your institution, by all means, let people know. It can be great to have that pipeline. It can be a way for um, faculty to get connected if there's someone who um, maybe wants to contribute to an introduction to legal philosophy or is looking for that textbook and wants to know when it will be available. They can contact Palney, for example. This is something that the community created, and it's really exciting to see it up and running and to see um, how many people and how many institutions are contributing to the Open Textbook Library collection. I mentioned we're running a Manifold pilot group. You can hear more about that on Thursday, July 27th. We have a social work case study out of Eastern Kentucky University. You can hear from your colleagues, Kelly Smith and Laura Edwards talk about that project and what they've learned working with Manifold. And uh, Katita's launching the summer, so stay tuned about how that goes. 
More quickly about Manifold, we did create a cookbook within our pilot group. You may have noticed this is a recurring theme. Uh, if you've been to other sessions this week already that have looked for recipes from you, I will just uh, remind you that we may add those recipes to another OEN cookbook. So if you would like to contribute, um, please let us know what you bring to a summer barbecue or picnic with friends. There's a link there for um, contribu contributing your recipes. I'd also like to talk about some leadership opportunities. The Pub 101 committee is currently looking for applicants. We have two open spots. Please apply by July 21st. You do not have to have participated in Pub 101, um, but we do have a brief application uh, where we would like to learn about your interest in contributing and um, what you imagine you could bring to the group. I'm sure that it is a lot, even as a new beginner, having those fresh eyes can be really important. We just launched the publishing advisory group this year, so we won't be looking for new members for a bit, but I hope it's something you'll keep in the back of your mind so that when you see that call in 2025, you just might apply. So wrapping up, where can I find all this stuff that I've been uh, talking about? You can find it on our website. Um, we recently redesigned our site. We're very excited about how it highlights um, many of the community created resources so that anyone can use them. You can see them there listed on the right side of the publishing page. If you have Community Hub access, you can also log in from our website there in the top right at the login. If you were to do that, it would take you to the Community Hub where you can access the calendar, get all the information, including the link to join Tea Time. And you could also see all of the publishing support that's available to you under the resources tab. Um, this is more extensive than what is available on the website. You can see here it also includes pilot documentation, for example, additional community documents, templates and guides, and so on. Um, I believe there was a, a, a question earlier about Scribe Publishing Services. You'll see it there at the very top under the publishing support tab. So to recap, we talked about how the OEN can support your publishing efforts in three different ways. The most powerful is by community, and the community informs your professional development opportunities by their own experiences. And then we also look to provide infrastructure and support so that uh, people at more institutions can be contributing to the open education landscape if they so wish. So we've covered a lot of ground. We made it to questions and discussion. I would like to thank you again for your hard work in this space and for generously supporting one another as you carry forward. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm at K-L-A-U-R-I-T-S at umn.edu. I will stop sharing my screen now so that I can check out the chat and we can squeeze in some conversation. There is a question about the Katita pilot and whether it's too late to join. Cheryl, interesting. Um, we haven't gotten totally underway. Um, so if you would like to email me and let me know um, what the author is interested in doing, uh, we can talk about what that might look like. <laughs> It'd be great to have you. Yeah. The more the merrier. We're really interested in um, continuing to develop these tools. The Coco Foundation, who um, we worked with on developing them, is committed to incorporating your feedback. So the process continues. Angelique, it looks like your hand is raised. Yes, and I just wanted to add a little um, insight as someone who's just newly joined the OEN um, Admin Publishing Co-op um, in Publishing 101. Uh, you know, I came to both organizations or committees with just like a little bit of my own nascent OER understanding. And one of the things I have found so very useful is that I think we forget um, how isolating this work can be on so many of our campuses. 
very often we're on, we're the only ones working on a program or we're one of like a, of a very small number. And a lot of our work is advocacy and convincing and proselytizing. So I've really found it useful to come to like one area where so many are sharing the same questions and concerns and I can have a more efficient route to getting the answers I need. Like you said, Karen, versus just kind of throwing it out into the air and hoping that someone's going to respond. You know, I'm getting real names, real bodies, real people who are doing this at their own institutions. And, you know, you, it's just really hard. Like it's impossible to put, um, to codify that, like how valuable that support and empathy is. Because it really is advocacy work. It really is. And you've got to celebrate every win for most of these projects. Thanks, Angelique. This is Alexander Rodriguez um, from, from University of Texas in Dallas. Hey, everybody. Um, I, I actually wanted to actually, I actually was going to say the same exact thing that Angelique just said. Um, in the sense of like, I have, you know, like I said, I've been an advocate for many years, but the community that I have discovered within the OER movement that we have across, you know, across, across like, has been so invaluable, has been extremely invaluable and in be able to, to sort of like, you know, because at certain universities, they might have a more robust program. But then for the university I'm at right now, we're kind of getting started. So this has been like extremely helpful to know that there are people out there on all spectrums of, you know, they might just be starting, they might have been established for, for a long period of time. So this has been very, very helpful. And, and also because I put it in chat, but I also wanted to say this because we're being recording right now. I do want to give a shout out to the ASL interpreters. Thank you very much for what you do. Okay, and I want so I, I wanted to, to put that down there, mortalize it. Hope Thank everybody you, has a great day. Thank you, Alexander, for um, sharing your experience and your kudos to the interpreters. Would anyone else like to ask a question or share their experience? If so, feel free to unmute, say your name and your institution and Okay, if a question comes to you later, you know where you can reach us. So please don't hesitate to ask. And I look forward to seeing many of you again later this week. And would like to thank you again for setting aside time to join us today. You're all um, very busy, I'm sure. And um, we really appreciate having some time to come together and, and talk. So best wishes and take care and see you soon. Thank you.